dear respected Thai, dear brothers, sisters, and dear Sangha, today is the 24 November, the year 2019. We are in the um, assembly stars of medi meditation hall, Ablau Hamlet. We are in the um, third floor of the three retreat. I hope that everyone benefit from the practice during this three months. Uh, today we have some uh, lay friends who stay here with us for one week or two weeks, and I hope that uh, uh, you can enjoy the practice together with the brothers and sisters and also with the long-term lay friends. And today the weather is very beautiful outside. Is we had the uh, sun. Shy, we had the yellow leaves, sky is very bright. And I would like to offer you a song. Today I share in English, so I would like to offer the song in Vietnamese to balance. Uh, this song I made a few years ago. I um, I think that I, ho I offer my heart more than my voice. So the meaning of the song is, um, the song is about gratitude. Thank you, my little one, a tender young love. Thank you, respected one, all embracing compassion. Thank you, the ones who nurture goodness in the world. Thank you to life for giving me lightness on the path of joy. An internal song that impolishes on enmity. An internal song that dissipates all anger and hatred. An internal song that ends all afflictions. An internal song that brings faith and love to life. I'm still singing. It's a good news. Huh? I'm sitting here peacefully to welcome you home, my dear. Calm and courageous with a gentle, fresh smile. This morning in the countryside, sunrise, Flowers and leaves are laughing, celebrating a festival of a thousand years. All of humanity manifests in the unocean eyes of a child. And love is abundant in the most simple but intimate exchange. Cảm ơn em buồn tình yêu non dài Cảm ơn người với lượng cả bao dung Cảm ơn ai nuôi hào khí trong trần gian Cảm ơn đời cho ta nhẹ bước trên đường rộng chơi Lời ca thiên thu xóa hết bao hận thù, lời ca thiên thu xóa hết bao dần hờn, lời ca thiên thu xóa hết bao muộn phiền, lời ca thiên thu mang tình yêu đi vào cuộc đời. Tôi vẫn còn hát ca. Tôi vẫn còn ngồi yên để đón em trở về bên thang cảng trường nở nụ tình khôi. Sáng nay trong bình minh đông đôi hoa lá reo cười mơ hồi ngang năm. Nhân loại là đây trong ánh mắt thương ơi. Tình người chẳng hòa giữa nói cười thân quen. Cảm ơn em buồn tình yêu non dài. 
cảm ơn người với lượng ca bao dung cảm ơn ai nuôi hào khí trong trần gian cảm ơn đời cho ta nhẹ bước trên đường rộng chơi lời ca tiếng thu xóa hết bao giờ ngân lời ca tiếng thu xóa hết bao hận thù lời ca tiếng thu xóa hết bao muộn phiền lời ca tiếng thu mang tình yêu đi vào cuộc đời tôi vẫn còn hát ca tôi vẫn còn ngồi yên để đón em trở về bên thang cảng trường nở nụ tình khôi sáng nay trong bình minh đông đôi hoa lá reo cười mơ hồi ngang năm nhưng loài là đây trong ánh mắt thơ ngây tình người chẳng hòa xưa nói cười thân quen sáng nay trong bình minh đông đôi hoa lá reo cười mơ hồi ngang năm nhưng loài là đây trong ánh mắt thơ ngây tình người chẳng hòa xưa nói cười thân quen Dear Sangha, my sisters often ask me to sing, but I uh, rarely sing to, to them because I'm very shy. <laughs> but sit up here, I don't know why I don't feel, I don't know why I don't feel shy. Because I, th I see that you are um, as members in my family. And my fathers, my mother, my brothers, my sisters in my family. And so it is why I feel um, nourishing and I feel I am a child at the uh, family. So it is why I would like to offer a song to show my gratitude to the Sangha. Uh, Last few weeks, we had the game. We had a group of sisters to play game together. Uh, so now I would like to invite you to play game with me. <laughs> In the game, my sister asked everyone to draw a picture. Three pictures that we like the most. So now I would like to write that uh, picture again. So you can imagine if someone asks you to draw, to draw the picture, so what kind of picture you draw? Three pictures. So for me at that day, I draw a picture as a person.
who do sit in meditation. With the deer, I think that day I I draw more beautiful than now. <laughs> Because I like the nature, so it is why I want to do sitting meditation with the nature, with the deer, with the bird, with the trees, and with the grass. So this image. Um, help me to go back to myself, to be still, be still and know. So, sitting meditation is opportunity for us to go back to ourselves and enjoy our breathing. And we relax our body, relax our mind. And the moment. We do sitting meditation is the moment we want to become a Buddha. We want to become awakened one. We want to refresh ourselves. We want to relax ourselves. They sometimes say that sitting meditation is not to become a Buddha. But sometimes, when we do sitting meditation, we want to become a Buddha. We don't want to uh, let the time of sitting meditation drip away. We really treasure the time when we do sitting meditation. If we don't do sitting meditation well, how can we practice in the daily life? So everything happens. We need to be still. We don't need to hurry to do other things, uh, but we still first. In Vietnamese, we say "chuyện đâu còn có đó." It could be okay. Don't worry. Don't hurry. First, we have to be be uh, still. Be still and know. We don't need to hurry to find the solution. And be still and healed. When we have the wound, we have the suffering. We don't need to find way to overcome suffering, but go back to our soul. Be still. The wound will be healed. Uh, so first picture I draw that day is the one who do sitting meditation. And the second picture I draw is a tree. A tree with many roots. And the root we will dip down in the earth, in the soil. So, as a tree, we need to take root in the soil. The more root we have, the strong root we have, the the solid the tree is. So we can take a root in the sangha, in the family, blood family, spiritual family, in the sisterhood, brotherhood, in friends, in the Buddha, in the Dharma, in um, in central um, family. So the more root we have, the more solid we are. So we will contemplate how many root we have. If we don't have root, uh, we will um, die. We will suffer a lot. 
So try to find uh, to deep root in the Sangha. When you come here, you can take root in the spiritual family. In order that when you go home, you can bring the practice home and continue to take root in your blood family, in society, with your friend. So the more root you have, the nourishing you are. And to be a tree, you only need to be a tree. You don't need to be more than a tree. To be a tree, you can help a lot. When you look at the tree and you feel the tree very solid, very beautiful, so we feel nourishing. We don't need to be different. We can be beautiful, be yourself. You are already beautiful. You are already treasure. You are already precious. You don't need to be different with the tree. And you don't need to be different trees. Sometimes we compare to ourselves, compare ourselves with other people, and we see other people very um, good, do a lot of things, and we don't feel we are good, and we suffer. But with the practice, we go back to ourselves and recognize the beautiful quality inside of us to nourish. Because we know that everyone, every tree, are as precious as others. The linden tree is as precious as the old tree, and also as precious as the pine tree, as precious as the plum tree. Plum tree in the spring, it gives the flower and fruits. Linden tree in the autumn, it gives the yellow leaves. It doesn't, it doesn't give the flowers and fruit, but it can give the yellow leaves. And pine tree, it doesn't give flower, it doesn't give fruit for us to enjoy. It doesn't give leaf, yellow leaf in the autumn. It's always green but it always stays there to nourish us, to prevent storm and strong wind. And thanks to pine tree, we are safe. And it seems that the pine tree doesn't do much thing, but it's very solid. And everyone can enjoy the solidity of the pine tree. So as a pine tree, he doesn't need to become a plum tree or linden tree because the pine tree is also very precious. So it is the same with every one of us. We are very precious. We don't need to be different. To go back to ourselves and recognize the good quality inside of ourselves and nourish them. And that quality can come from our mother, can come from our father, can come from our uh, grandfather, grandfather, grandmother, and can come from our ancestors, blood ancestor, and in spiritual ancestor. So be beautiful, be yourself. You don't need to be different. And the third picture I draw is a mountain. And the beach. I like them all, but because I can only draw, draw three pictures, so it's why I draw mountain and beach together. <laughs> The mountain with the moon and the star. I 
hope that everyone had the opportunity to enjoy the mountain. Every time I enjoy the mountain, I feel nourishing. I feel I am solid. Especially in the early morning, we go to the mountain, and it's very silent. Maybe there are not many people on the mountain in the early morning, and we sit there and enjoy the silence of the mountain. It is very powerful, very strong, very solid, very courageous. The mountain is always there for us. And we feel that we are a child of a mountain. And when we feel that we are a child of a mountain, so what quality the mountain has, we will have. So we just go back to ourselves to recognize the good quality of the mountain inside of us. Very brave, very courageous, very solid, very silent, and we feel we are also very solid as a mountain. Every time I stand in front of the beach, the ocean, I want to open my eye, my arms, to embrace all people, to embrace all species. Because I see the ocean is very vast, very immense. And standing in front of ocean, I also feel that I'm very vast and immense. And sometimes, not staying in front of the ocean or the mountain, but I can visualize that I'm staying in front of the mountain and the ocean, and to enjoy the atmosphere of the mountain and the ocean. And right now, here, I can visualize that I stay, I stand in front of the ocean uh, to enjoy the ocean in front of me. Very vast and very immense. So we will nourish the mountain and the ocean inside of us. For us to be open, for us to be vast and immense. So this is the first game. I hope that everyone can draw your pictures and we can contemplate with your pictures. And the second game is we draw 10 things that we, 10 things that most important for us. So any, anything that we feel that the most important for us. And I write 10 things. And then, with that 10 things, the sister said that now we had to let go of two. <laughs> Let's go to least important. Oh, it is very difficult. <laughs> because when we choose the 10 most important things, and I choose like space, Harmony, happiness, joy, uh, peace, freedom, um, blood family, Thai, Dharma, practice, Sangha, sisterhood, love, understanding, many things. But all of them are very important. So it's really difficult to let go, even two, two things. But at the end, I have to let go two things. And then we had to let go more five things. Oh, it's really difficult because we see that all of them are important. So we only keep three things. And I keep space, harmony, J. 
joy, happiness, <laughs> and peace. I feel that I'm craving. <laughs> so it is the same with this picture. I wrote them together. And this also, because on the paper, I wrote them together. So I cannot uh, let go. So I, I, I keep one, two, and three. <laughs> Joy, happiness, and peace. So among other things I draw is my blood family. It's very important for me, but I also let go. I, I, I choose um, Thay. Thay is very important for me. He's always in my heart, but I have to let go. The Dharma is very important for me, but I also have to let go. Sisterhood is very important for me, but I also have to let go. Why? Because if I love my family, but I don't have joy, happiness, and peace, how can I bring joy and happiness to them? Even I love them, but I don't have this quality, maybe I cause them suffering. If I don't have the harmony, how can I bring harmony to my sisters? So even I really want to have the sisterhood, but if I don't have the harmony, I cannot make them happy. Even I keep the Dharma, the practice, but I don't practice happily, joyfully, peacefully, uh, so the practice, it doesn't help me. So it is why I keep this tweeting. So we had to create peace, a space inside of us, space inside and space outside. When we are occupied by many things, like worries, hurry, many plans, anger, jealous, jealousy, we are not so happy because we don't have space for happiness and joy. So we have to let go of them in order that we have more space inside. Imagine that in this room we have a lot of furniture and when we come, we cannot enjoy. When we come to this hall, we can enjoy because it's, there, there is a lot of space. There is no many furniture. So it is the same with our mind, with our body. If we, are, if we have a lot of space inside, we have a lot of joy, happiness, and peace. So space, we have the space outside and space inside. And harmony is also the same. Harmony has to be inside. When we feel itchy, so the left hand, certainly we raise left hand and we scratch. The left hand and the right hand doesn't need to discuss which hand should sketch the forehead. It's do naturally. But it's very harmony. So the same with all other organs in my in our body. When our organ, when our organs uh, don't work harmony, don't work in harmony, we become sick. And it is the same with the family, and with the sangha. If we don't have the harmony we become sick, family becomes sick. So harmony is very important. So maybe next week we will learn more about harmony. So today I would like to save time for other things. And next thing is the joy, happiness, and peace. In the, our life, we have to nourish joy and happiness. If we don't have joy and happiness, we will become tired, we become exhausted, 
and we will die slowly and slowly. So whatever makes you happy and joy, please keep doing it. But that joy and happiness have to base on peace. If you are happy and joyful, but your happiness and your joy doesn't base on peace, maybe you bring a lot of suffering to other people or you bother people around you. So joy and happiness have to base on peace, inner peace. You can find joy and happiness in the practice. When we do walking meditation, we can create joy and we can create happiness in every step we make. We can go back to ourselves and be present in the contact between our feet and our ground, and Mother Earth. And we can enjoy the Mother Earth. We can enjoy the beauty of the Mother Earth. We can enjoy the green grass. We can enjoy the wonders of the life. And it nourishes us. And also when we go back to ourselves, we can develop the good quality inside of us. It can also bring us a lot of joy and happiness. And also, we had to create peace for us. And peace we can create based on stillness. Sometimes we feel um, unpeaceful, we feel irritated, we feel angry. We have to go back to our breathing to calm down ourselves. So that is the first thing we do. We don't need to hurry to do other things. So calm down ourselves first. And when we have the peace, we know what to do and what not should do. So this is uh, three elements. We had to nourish ourselves in the daily life. And if we want to nourish this element, we had to know how to deal with our suffering. Because if we, are, if we suffer too much, uh, we, don't, we cannot enjoy the happiness and joy. Because the suffering overwhelms ourselves. And we don't have space to enjoy, to do the thing we like. So it is why if we want to be happy, if we want to be joyful, if we want to be peaceful, we have to know how to deal with our suffering. So when you suffer, we also go back to our breathing. 
So the first thing we do is to go back. Go back to our breathing to recognize to recognize our suffering, to see where in our body the suffering accumulate, where in our body suffering stay. Maybe it stay in our heart, it stay in our intestine, it stay in our liver, it stay in our shoulders, it stay in our head, and then you can let go, let go of suffering. Any kinds any kind of suffering accumulate on our body. So what kind of suffering you have? You suffer because anger, right? Because depression, because despair, because of doubt, because of hatred, because of fear. Are you fearful? Do you have the fear? Yes, we have a lot of fear. We are afraid that we are not good enough. We are afraid that the people don't accept us. We are afraid that we can be happy. We are afraid that we cannot solve the problem. Many things that make us fearful. So it's become the suffering. So when we have this kind of mental formations come up, we go back to ourselves, do nothing, just enjoy our breathing, and release the tension in our body. And stay, we have to stay with suffering. Don't run away from suffering. If you run away from suffering, you don't understand your suffering. You don't know how to get out of suffering. So the first thing you do is to stay with your suffering, with the breathing. But sometimes our suffering is so strong and it overwhelms us and we cannot bear with the suffering. So we have to nourish joy, happiness, and peace. We have to nourish space and harmony inside of us first. But when we are strong enough, we invite the suffering to come up. Inviting is just the way to say, but it's come up naturally. <laughs> but when it's come up naturally, you can be with it, breathe with it, and release Release the suffering. Go back to your breathing, recognize your suffering, embrace your suffering, and then you can release the suffering. Because suffering is also a kind of stress. It's also the kind of tension. When you suffer, you feel tension. You feel tense in your body. And release the tension. And when you, leave, you release the tension, the stress, you can release the suffering. Thay you to give us an example. When there is an arrow uh, strike in our body, so the first thing we do is take it out and take good care of the wound. You don't need or you don't hurry to find the solution. You don't need to know who will strike you. Where this come from? Is this poison or not? To take care of the wound first. If you want to know, it is the second step. 
But the first step, you have to take care of your wound. So it is the same with all kinds of suffering. When sufferings come, it's accumulate in your body. And you have to listen to your suffering and release the suffering. And then you know what to do. Because you understand yourself, you understand the people who cause you the suffering. So you have to stay, stay with the suffering and release suffering. And then you can understand And then you understand and you find the solution. And sometimes we have to in touch with the suffering of the world in order that to see our suffering is very, very small, very, very little. Sometimes we suffer and we see that our suffering is very enormous. No one can suffer as our, as us. But when we are in touch with the suffering of the people in the world, we see that our suffering is nothing. It's just a dust. It's just a seed of sesame or a seed of corn. And when we are in touch with the suffering of the people in the world, maybe our suffering disappears, dissolved. So we have to be in touch. So it is a process of dealing with the suffering. We have to go back to our breathing to recognize our suffering so we know what is going on in our body. It is mindfulness. And mindfulness is the heart of meditation. We cannot practice meditation without mindfulness. We have to be there. We have to be with your breathing, with body, with mind, feeling. So it is a mindfulness. And when we are mindful, we can stay with that object of contemplation. Always stay there, not run away. And when we stay there, not running away, continuously we develop the concentration. And then, with concentration, we are at peace because we release the suffering. We are at peace. We calm down. So the inside comes up naturally. The inside is something outside of us that we find down. But the inside is inside of us. And when we are peaceful enough, when we are calm enough, the inside comes up. So with concentration, We have the insight. And the insight helps us to 
transform the suffering totally. But we have to keep it on and on and on. Like when we make the fire, if we want not to be tired to make a fire, we have to keep the fire on and on and on. If we let the fire off, and then we have to do it again. I remember that one day they asked me the question, our mind is impermanent or permanent? Tâm của mình thường hay vô thường? So I see that the question is very easy because we learn that all formations are impermanent. Everything is impermanent. So it's the same with our mind. So they ask me, our mind is impermanent or permanent? I don't answer this question because I see that it's easy. Maybe there's something <laughs> in it. And they ask me again, huh? our mind is impermanent or permanent? And I say, dear Thay, our mind is impermanent. And they said that we had to practice in such a way that we keep our mind permanent. <laughs> and permanent here is a Continuously, always concentrate. Not on and up, on and up, but always keep it on. Because if we let our mind on and up, on and up, it means that your mind is impermanent. But we always keep it on, it means that our mind is permanent. So that is a concentration, how you to keep your mind continuously how to keep the fire always on. So in the concentration, there are many kinds of concentration, but there is a samadhi. With the samadhi, we can keep something on and on and on and on. So with the practice, when we have to keep our mind peaceful, happy, and joy, we try to keep it on and on and on and on and on but not on, off, not on, off. It's really difficult practice. Huh? But even, even some moment we are not so happy, we are not so joyful, but try to keep our mind peaceful. We can be peaceful when we suffer. And if we cannot keep our mind on in concentration, we cannot have the insight. Understand, is it insight? So these three elements we have to nourish and cultivate every day. Mindfulness, concentration, and insight. Sometimes we suffer, we want to close ourselves. We don't want to open with everyone. And we feel lonely. Even we sit among many people, but we still feel lonely. And with the same method, we go back to our breathing. Breathe with loneliness. And release the tension in your body. And we feel the connected to people. At the beginning, we can remind ourselves by the word, like we are connected to the sisters, we are connected to brothers, we are connected to friends, we are connected to 
our blood family, we are connected to spiritual family, we are connected to Mother Earth. So at the beginning, we can say that even we don't feel we are connected, but we have to train ourselves, so we have to speak out, we are connected. And slowly, slowly, we feel we are connected, really connected to the people, and we don't feel lonely anymore. If we feel lonely and we run away from loneliness, we can never transform loneliness. We have to be there and practice. And then, when you feel connected to people, you don't need the word. You don't need to repeat it. We are connected. So the word is just concept. And when we have the insight, we don't need the concept. Like we met the fire, we need wood. But when we have the fire, the fire we burn the wood. We need the match, the match to help us to have the fire. But when we've had the fire, the fire we burn the match. But at the beginning, we need it. So at the beginning, we need work to help. We have to repeat again and again and again until we feel connected. We don't run away. And we are always open to other people. As a tree, we are just a tree. We offer the shade for people who need it. In the sun, sometimes maybe in the summer, the weather is very hot and the people get hot, sweat out, and we just come to the tree and enjoy the shade of the tree and we feel happy. And the tree be there for the people. The tree doesn't discriminate people. The tree didn't say that you, before you don't take good care of me, why now you come here to sit in f- under me? Before you don't pay attention to me, you don't love me, sometimes you disparage me, sometimes you look down on me, why now you come here to sit under me, to enjoy my shade? No, the tree doesn't say that. The tree always there for those who want to en- come to enjoy. Sometimes the tree also hurt, feel hurt. For example, the people come to enjoy the sage. They discuss a lot of not nourishing things. They throw the garbage there without clean off, so the tree become sad and suffer. But when the people come, the tree can open his branch to receive people. So it is the same with mountain and beach and ocean. They're always there for us. When we know how to transform the suffering, we are always there for other people. We can be, we can open for other people. When we don't want to receive people, it means that the suffering is still inside of you. And we have to go back to take care of our suffering. 
So take care of ourselves is very important. Before you do other things, take care of your family, take care of children, take care of brothers and sisters, take care of community. You have to know how to take care of yourself. If you don't know how to take good care of yourself, how can you take care of other people? If you don't understand yourself, how can you understand other people? The Confucius say that Tu thân tề gia trì quốc bình thiên hạ First of all, you have to know take good care of yourself and then take good care of your family and then society, the country and then the people. So take good care of yourself is very important. And if mindfulness is the heart of the meditation, and take good care of ourselves is the heart of taking care of others. If you love someone, and you want to offer them joy and happiness, But if you are full of suffering, you only cause them to suffer. The willingness is not enough because you can only offer what you have. You cannot offer what you don't have. If you don't have joy, if you don't have happiness, if you don't have peace, how can you offer them? So you have to nourish for yourself first before you take care of other people. So take care of yourself is the heart of taking care of other people. The way out is in. Before you can reach out to help, you have to reach in to take care of yourself. And when you take good care of yourself, you can reach out to take care of other people. And when you take care of other people, that people doesn't stay outside of you, but you have to stay inside of them to help them. You have to be in their skin to understand them. If you stay outside of them, you may not understand them. And what you would like to help, maybe you cause them to suffer. So you have to be in them. If you want to take care of the Sangha, you have to be in the Sangha. You don't stay outside of Sangha to help the Sangha. If you want to help your family, you have to be in your family. You have to be in their skin and flesh of people to help to understand people and to help people. So help people, you have to base on understanding. If you don't understand, maybe you can offer yourself and others time and space. If you hurry to help, maybe it doesn't work. You have to understand first. So it is the base to build the Sangha. So it is the Sangha. So whatever we want the Sangha to be, we have to nourish ourselves. If you want the Sangha to be joyful, you have to be joyful. If you want the Sangha to be peaceful, you have to be peaceful. If you want the Sangha to be happy, you have to be happy. So what do you want the Sangha like? What do you want the Sangha 
to be. You, do you want the Sangha happy? So can, can, you, can you tell me something that you want the Sangha to be? Someone raise your hands, please. No? Do you want the Sangha to be happy? Yes, yes. happiness. Are you want, do you want the Sangha to be joyful? Do you want the Sangha to be peaceful? Do you want the Sangha to be um, tolerance? Do you want the Sangha to be um, harmony? Loving and compassion, understanding. Understanding, open, smiling. What else? Huh? Nourishing. Do you want the Sangha to be inclusive? Do you want the Sangha to have the forgiveness? Do you want the Sangha to be at ease? Do you want the Sangha to be free? Yes. Dancing. <laughs> what else? Huh? Acceptance. Acceptance. Healing. Healing. Healthy. 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 Playful. What else? Sustainable. 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 Is that correct? Sustainable. Okay, many, many elements that we would like our Sangha to be. So if we would like the Sangha to be like this, we have to nourish ourselves with this element. We cannot say, why you don't love me? Why you don't love people? Right? We cannot say, why you don't understand me? Why you don't understand her or him? So whatever you would like the people treat you, you have to nourish yourself that quality and treat people as you want the people treat you. And when we go back to our soul, we listen to our soul, we will know how beautiful we are, how precious we are, and also how limited we are how difficult to transform the habit energy. And when we understand ourselves, how difficult to transform the habit energy, so we can understand other people. They may really want to transform the habit energy, but because it's difficult for them, so we offer them space and time to transform. We don't hurry them. We don't expect them to transform right away because we understand transform the habit energy is not so easy. So we support them because we go back to ourselves and understand ourselves.
practice today, the topic of today is to take care of ourselves in order that we can take good care of our Sangha. And when we want to take care, good care of our Sangha, we have to ask a question, what can we do today to help the Sangha happy? What can we do today to help Sangha peaceful? We don't need to wait until we become older sister, younger sister to build the Sangha, but as a long term, as a short term, as a young brother and sisters, we can build the Sangha. And if we ask this kind of question, so we know what to do to have the Sangha happy. Sometimes we try to find the solution. Even the, even the problem doesn't come yet, but we think of the way to solve the problem when it's come. <laughs> and we don't have time and energy to enjoy happiness and joy. So please do more things that you like to nourish your joy and happiness than find a way to solve problem. And you can solve the problem when the problem comes. You don't need to think in advance because everything is impermanent. So please save your time and energy to think of joy and happiness. What can I do to help my Sangha happy? And if you find a way to help people happy and joyful, happiness and joy will come. If you solve the problem, the problem will come. So what you prefer? You prefer solve, solving problem or you prefer being happy? So the answer is very clear. <laughs> and to live in the harmony, we had to have the capacity to let go of our idea. We had to practice non-self. We see that our left hand and right hand discriminate each other. They only see things need to be done, and they do it. And we see that the left hand and the right hand are the same in the bo- are the same as a body. So as a, each member in our community, we are the same. We are the same, the community. So everyone in our community are, is as precious as others. And we treasure them all. Because the sisters who cook today, for me and for Sangha, so it is why I can sit here to share with you my practice. So the sisters who cook in the kitchen are as important as myself who sit here to share with you. The lay friends, the sister who cleaned in the toilet this morning to have the hamlet more clean, serenely, and beautifully are as important as myself to sit here to share with you. Because everyone contribute their part to have the Sangha beautiful and happy. So we treasure them all. So that is the way we build the Sangha. Building the Sangha, we have to base on non-self. We don't feel that we are separate from other people. We inter with each other. Uh, last Thursday, in Upper Hamlet, we had the monastic day in Upper Hamlet, and Upper Hamlet very beautiful with the yellow leaves. 
And because of the beauty of the nature, it helped me a lot. And because of the beauty, so it's come up in myself um, a poetry in Vietnamese. <laughs> so I would like to read, to offer to the brothers to show my gratitude uh, for keeping the place beautiful, for people to enjoy. Sầm thường hôm nay ngập lạ vàng, bước chân thanh thản dào đồi cao, mây trắng thông dong về chỗ cụ, tim trong mắt sáng nụ cười vang. Upper Hamlet is immersed with autumn leaves today, today's mean that day. Serene footstep, with the serene step, we walk on the high hill. White cloud leisurely back to the old place. Pure heart and bright eyes resounds with laughter. So when we nourish our soul with joy and happiness, even we go back to our past, go back to our suffering. But the suffering doesn't make it um, Overwhelmed, we can be happy and joyful even we go back to our past. So nourish ourselves in the present moment and heal the past. Today the weather is beautiful even we don't have uh, a lot of uh, autumn leaves as upper hamlet. But I hope that we can enjoy um, the mindfulness day here in the low hamlet. So I wish you a pure heart, bright eyes to enjoy the your laughter and enjoy the nature. Thank you very much for your listening.